When the sun has set on a Friday night, bringing peace into your home. Families will gather all around, sing and show about shalom. Everybody sing shalom. a gift from God to put a smile upon your face He's got the whole world in his hands so obey his commands and you will know peace Shalom As ich will singen lecha dodi, sollst du singen shiri biri bim. As ich will singen li kras kala, sollst du singen shiri biri bom. Lecha dodi, shiri biri bim. Li kras kala, shiri biri bom. Lecha dodi, li kras kala, shiri biri 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 bom. Shiri bim, shiri bom, bom. Shiri bim, shiri bim, bom bim bom bim bom. Shiri bim. Bim, cheery bum, cheery bum, cheery bim, a bim bum, bim bum bum. I cheery very, very 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 bum. Shabbat shalom, my dear friends. It's been a very significant week. In the beginning of the week, we commemorated Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass, and everything that came from that. And then Veterans Day, where we celebrated our over 65 veterans here at the Jewish home. Absolutely an honor to have all of you who are veterans and all of you who have stood by uh, your veterans and uh, protected justice and righteousness and, and our, our country. Some of our veterans uh, even served in the Israeli military, which is very, very meaningful. So for this week, I've decided to do something that I think you'll think is fun. And that is we're going to make chopped liver together. And let me tell you how I got to that. This week's Torah portion is about Sarah, our foremother. In fact, the portion is called Chaye Sarah, which means the life of Sarah, even though the Torah portion starts out with her passing. And the rabbis were really intrigued by her for a variety of reasons. But the question is, what was so special about Sarah? And what does it have to do with chopped liver? So what was so special about Sarah, among the many other things, I mean, some of the rabbis said she was nearly a perfect person, that she was as kind and wonderful as a human being can be. But also something special about her is that she knew how to enjoy life. And she knew how to laugh. There are two episodes in the Torah uh, that involve Sarah and laughter. And according to our tradition, according to the rabbi's understanding of Sarah, not only did she feel and embrace joy, but her laughter was infectious. And so she brought joy to others. And the reason that this is so magnificent is she had some really rough things going on in her life. Remember that she was a barren woman her entire life, which back then was everything for a woman. I mean, childbirth was your entire identity. And if you think back to the story of Hannah, where she sobs and cries because of her barrenness, which is a very human and natural reaction, somehow Sarah was able to overcome hardship 
and find joy and happiness in her life, a real gift and a real model uh, to all of us. She had other things happen in her life. In two different occasions, kings took her thinking she was Abraham's sister, thinking she was available. Can you imagine how terrifying? She could have been a person who was paralyzed by traumatic memories, but instead she brought laughter and joy to the world. What does that have to do with chopped liver? Well, I'll tell you. I have never made chopped liver in my life, but I really, really like it. In fact, I love it. And so I asked a number of our residents, what is the secret to making good chopped liver and so forth? And in almost every case, my residents, our residents at the Jewish home said, I didn't really make chopped liver, but my mother did. Which is really interesting was, was your mother and father, was that the last generation of people who really, on a widespread manner, made a uh, chopped liver? I don't know. I mean, my own mother hardly ever made it, but her mother made it a lot. And in fact, she told me that because they were so poor, they could only have a little bit of liver, a little bit of uh, eggs. And then um, my grandmother apparently had to add on a bunch of eggplant just to make more of it because there wasn't enough liver and eggs or even onions to go around. So I got to hear a lot of uh, interesting stories, which I'll, I'll recount in a little bit. But I say this because this week should be a tribute to Sarah, our foremother, and to all of our mothers and grandmothers and their mothers who nurtured us and sustained us and fed us and figured out a way to make enough for all of us. So what I want to do is I want to invite you into my kitchen where you will witness for the first time in my life as I try to make chopped liver. Let's go inside. Welcome to my kitchen. This is very exciting because honestly, I've never once in my life made chopped liver. And I asked a bunch of you for advice. Many of you gave me your mother's recipes or parts of your mother's recipes. And the part that was most confusing for me was some people make chopped liver with chicken liver. And some people make chopped liver with calf liver or beef liver. So I was unsure which direction to go in. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to make two different chopped liver recipes. So I'm going to be making double of all of the other things like the onion and the egg. So let's start. Okay. I've got my pot and I'm going to put in eight eggs because, uh, or maybe even more than that, because ultimately I'm going to need eight um, so that I can make the two separate recipes. I'm un I understand that you need about four eggs per chopped liver recipe. Well, I hope I didn't check that. So I'm going to fill it up with water and put it on the stove to get it started so that the uh, hard-boiled eggs will be ready when I'm ready for them. So here we go. Put it on the stove. Turn the stove on. All right, there we go. Okay, what we should do next, I think, is cut the onions or chop them up. Now, again, I've been given different advice. Some of you said to cut the onion in little pieces. Other people said to cut it into rings. I think I'm going to do some sort of compromise, maybe thin rings and cut them in half, something like that. So I'm going to get started now. I've got a lot of onions here. Can you see? Look at all my onions. So let's get started. We'll give a little cut. Here we go. You're probably not going to want to watch me cut up all of the onions. That could take a little bit of a while, but let's cut maybe one onion together. How does that sound? Are you a person who um, gets teary when you chop onions? I discovered a long time ago that if you refrigerate your onions, it doesn't make you as teary. Um, I think some of you have even said that to me. And I've discovered that if I'm wearing glasses, it's not as bad. Now, I have to be honest, I did not have time to refrigerate my onions because I just bought these onions about an hour ago. But let's get started. Here we go. I'm going to go some, some cutting right here. I hope you can see. Also, some of you have told me that your mothers had special grinders for chopped liver making. And... I don't have a grinder, and I have to be honest with you, at this stage, I don't even know yet how I'm going to grind the liver later uh, in this uh, plan. I don't know what to do, because I don't think I have the right um, equipment. Now, I could use a Cuisinart, but the only problem with a Cuisinart is that uh, it could end up a little mushy, which some people like, but then you've got more of like a, a pate, don't you think? 
then maybe a pate is good. I really did. Oh, this is a funny thought. Have you ever heard the expression, like, let's say I went over to my parents' house and I brought a bottle of wine and my mom doesn't drink wine. So let's say I were to give that bottle of wine to my dad. And let's say my mother were to say, what am I, chopped liver? Where does that expression come from? That implies that chopped liver is a bad or insignificant thing. I don't know. It's really confusing. I'm going to show you the job I did. You tell me if you think I cut it up in small enough pieces. I mean, I think it's fine. And we'll mash it up later. While the onion is sauteing, I think it makes sense to get the liver ready. So here's the calf liver. Honestly, I've never worked with calf liver in my life. I've never worked with any liver in my life. It's kind of intense. Ooh, it has a weird texture. Wait, okay, I don't even know what to do here. I guess I'll just, it's very slimy. I guess I'll just kind of lie it on here because I was told that the best way to do calf liver, chopped liver, is actually to broil the liver, which really came as a surprise to me because when I think of chopped liver, I always think of sauteing. I mean, I maybe saw my mother make liver once or twice my whole life, and I know she sauteed it, but my mother made it with chicken liver. This is a little bit different. So I'm going to get the calf liver. Oh, that's the indicator that the eggs are ready. Just turn off the timer there, turn off my eggs. Um, so here we have the calf liver ready to, uh, be, uh, broiled and the eggs are going to need to be peeled now. Maybe we should check in on our onions. Let's take a look. Here we go. I'm going to take you over to the onions. Ooh, they're looking pretty good. I, if you close your eyes, I bet you can smell them because they really smell delicious. Mm -hmm. I'm about to start peeling the eggs, so maybe I'll peel one egg while uh, we're together here. And I'm also almost done with the first batch of onions. Now, what's interesting is one person told me to make the onions translucent. Some other people told me to make sure that the onions are golden brown. So, you know, what's correct? It's hard to say. Well, my friends, I've got some good news. The onions seem to be nice and translucent with a little bit of golden brownness to them. I've already peeled all of the eggs for both batches, as you can see. And here is the broiled calf liver. I hope I did not overcook. We're gonna find out pretty soon. What I'm gonna do now I'm going to allow those three things to cool down while I get the next batch of onions ready, along with the chicken liver. Okay, I'm a little bit freaked out about this next step. Apparently, I'm supposed to take the chicken liver, which I'm going to do right now, and wash it. Um, and I don't know how you wash uh, chicken liver. And then, according to my instructions, it says... Um, Let's see, wash 10 chicken livers and place them in a colander to drip. Um, remove the white thread and make sure there's no green residue of gallbladder. That's a little scientific for me, but I'm going to do it because that's what it says to do. So you can watch me here. I'm going to take each chicken liver, rinse it, and then um, put it in the colander. I don't know. I don't know. I just have to be honest, I'm not sure how I feel about this. My friends, I just spent quite a bit of time cleaning the chicken livers, and I've got to tell you, pulling out those white strings was almost spiritual for me, because on the one hand, it was a tiny bit gross, but also I was connecting with our mothers and grandmothers who must have painstakingly saved every piece of the liver to pull the strings out because they couldn't waste. Here I was with my scissors. I was literally using these scissors and I was just like snip, snip, snip. And if a little bit of liver got tossed out, you know, I'm fine. But think of how it was for our ancestors and, uh, and even our more immediate family members, kind of interesting. Well, right now I'm onto my second batch of onions for the chicken liver batch. And uh, I'll show you how it's going. It's just, they're still pretty white. Um, uh, just beginning to get translucent, I guess, a little tiny bit. Um, and I'm, I have to be honest, I have no idea 
when I'm supposed to add the liver. Oh, ooh, I see now. I see a little bit of brown. Okay, I'm gonna add the liver. You hang tight, here we go. You can watch me do it. Are you ready from the columnar to the pan? Here I go, here's the liver and in. Okay, let's see how that goes. You know, I've gotta say that the ratio of onion to liver seems kind of high. I wonder if that's because <laughs> I wasn't careful enough with saving every piece. We'll see, it could end up a little oniony, but I'm sure it'll be delicious nonetheless. Here I am kind of stirring quickly as the liver loses its color. Here, let me turn on a little light here. I do have a light. There we go. Does that help? Yeah. So the liver's kind of becoming a sort of tan color instead of the red as the onions get cooked a little bit more. Well, this being almost ready, I'm putting in a little bit of salt. And I already put a little bit of pepper, but I'm going to squirt just a little bit more. See how that goes. Well, my friends, this is the moment we've been waiting for. Now we get to grind everything together. Now I look far and wide in my kitchen, and I have to tell you, the only thing I have for grinding is my Cuisinart. I don't have one of those grinders that our moms had. Remember those, the meat grinders? I think that's what I need, but I'm going to have to compromise with what I have. So here I go. It's going to get a little noisy, but you're going to watch me put everything in. So let's start by putting the um, actual uh, calf liver in, and then we'll put the onions and the, uh, and the egg. And by the way, with this recipe, this recipe calls for adding Lipton onion soup, which is so interesting. We'll do that later. All right, here we go. Ready? I'm turning it on. Here we go. Okay, here goes the liver. Some people might say, here goes nothing. Now, I heard that there's the option of grinding twice. I don't know if it'll be necessary. We're going to find out together, aren't we? These are my last pieces of liver. Okay. Now, I think I need to put in four eggs, but let me check. Yes, four large eggs. Here I go. Well, this is fun, actually. Here we go. One, two. Three, four. Now, I gotta say, the amount of onion that I'm putting into this recipe it seems kind of remarkable, but it must be what works because our, our mothers did it. So they did it. If it's good enough for them, it's good enough for us. This is gonna take a little bit of time. Well, I just put in the rest of the onions. I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna dump it in a bowl. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mash it a little bit with like a mashed potato masher, you know? So let's see if I can find one. Yeah, here's one right here. Let's see if this works. Here we go. Oh, yeah. It's kind of doing it. Okay. While it may not be as ground down as it would have been if I had one of those grinders, I think it's pretty much ready. Here it is. So I'm going to take a little taste. Minnie, my dog, is begging for some, but I don't know if that would be a good idea. Let's take a little bit of it, put it on bread. Let me taste it. Oh my gosh, it's delicious. It's really delicious. I'm sharing it with you in my heart. Now, are you ready to make the chicken liver, chopped liver? I'm ready. Here we go. I got my food processor back. By the way, washing the food processor from the a chopped liver was a little bit like washing cement off of something and I'm starting to get a sense of why your generation may have found it unnecessary to make chopped liver even though it's delicious. Here we go. Uh, let's start with the eggs this time, okay? Here we go. One egg. Boom. Two eggs. Boom. Three eggs. There we go. And four eggs. Okay. And now we will begin to put the liver in. Now, in this case, the liver and the onion are together, so I think I'm going to use my hands. That doesn't seem too weird for you. But I really do want you to ask yourself, can you remember your mother or your father or grandmother making chopped liver from scratch? Can you remember the kind of Yiddish kind, the Jewish feeling in the house? Can you remember enjoying it after all of that hard work? 
you know, cooking is a, is a way of expressing love for a lot of people. And uh, I know that I express love that way as one of the ways I express love. Yes, sir. I'm going to show it to you right now. There it is. I'm going to dump it upside down. Hopefully not waste too much. I think your generation was much more worried about wasting even tiny bits of things than mine is. It's not that we're wasteful. It's just that, you know, at least most of the people in our community that I know, even though I want to acknowledge that one in five children in this country go to bed hungry every night, in our community, um, we don't really, we don't live in fear of running out of food like those of you who lived through the Depression or the Holocaust or worse. So um, here is my, here, I'll tilt this down so you can see as I stir it up. For some reason, this grinded much better than the other one. I don't know why. And let's take a little with the spoon. Ooh, I'm almost a little nervous. I don't know. I want to make sure it's good. Here we go. Mm. That's good too. Wow. I'm not sure which one I like better. You know what? I'm going to refrigerate it and I'm going to have it cold because these are both warm still. And then I think I'm going to be able to judge it. I'm going to have them back to back, maybe cleaning the palate. And I'll get back to you on which one I like more. But meanwhile, I think it's time for us to get ready to say the blessings because Shabbat is coming very soon. And I know you're going to be having your Shabbat dinner soon, and so am I. So let's go ahead and get ready with the candlesticks and the wine and the challah. Well, that was fun, albeit a little bit challenging without the grinder. I mean, if I had had the grinder, I could have done what one of our residents recommended, which is to grind in a little bit of raw onion for a special kick. Anyway, I sent over a bowl of each of the kinds of chopped liver to my parents, and we'll have to see what they think when they do their taste test. Anyway, thanks for being with me today and getting ready for Shabbat with this kind of retro sort of kitchen time um, that originally I had in mind because I had assumed that many of you make chopped liver. And yet it's so interesting to note that most of you didn't very much, but your parents did. Very exciting to honor them that way. And of course, we think of our ancestor, Sarah, with all of her goodness and inspiration and her life that the Jewish people all over the world are celebrating this week for the Torah portion, Chaye Sarah. All right, how about if we light? Here we go. Ya la 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 Ya la 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 Ya la 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 Shehel Shabbat Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaHolam Asher Kirishanu V'mitzvotav Vaivarechelohimitiomashivakadeshatokivoshavadmikomotoashavarvailimasot <laughs> Zikara le mahasev reshit, ki hu yom techila le mikra he kodesh, zechel litiat mitzrayim, ki vanu vacharta veotanu ki dashta, mikol hamim, veshabahat kahot shecha, veava uvrat son in chaltanu, baruchata hadonai mekahadehish, Hashabahat Amen Lachayim. And now it's my honor to offer you a blessing on this Shabbat. 
Yevarecha Adonai v'yishmerecha. May God bless you and keep you. Yaher Adonai v'anah v'lecha v'chunecha. May God's light shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yisa Adonai, Yisa Adonai, Pana v'lecha v'yasem lecha shalom. May God gaze upon you and your loved ones and give you the blessing of health and the blessing of peace. And we say, Amen. Well, Shabbat's almost here. And I know your meal is coming very soon. So let's make mosi together. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam. Hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Shabbat shalom. From my home, to your home, wishing you the sweetest of Shabbatot, a Shabbat filled with joy and peace and rest and happiness and with love from our home to yours. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. When the sun has set on a Friday night, bringing peace into your home, families will gather all around sing and Shabbat Shalom everybody sing Shalom